I want to tell you about the most important lesson I got when I was an undergrad, which is what I now call the why exercise. So I was, for a time, an art student, and I was taking uh, an intermediate photography class. And as our final assignment, we had to put together a portfolio of photographs, some collection. And the advice my professor gave is for each little aspect of each photo, ask why. So why am I framing it like this? Why did I include this thing in the foreground? Well, because I wanted to evoke some feeling of X, Y, Z. And then ask why again. Why do I want to evoke this feeling of whatever? Well, because of elemental theory. Well, why that? Well, because A, B, C. And you just keep iteratively going down, right? You're basically playing your own four-year-old. Ask why, give yourself an answer, and ask why to that answer. And for me, what I got out of that assignment was, well, I'm studying art because I'm hoping it's going to help me pick up girls. And it wasn't really working. Uh, so for me, the why exercise helped me to avoid going further down that path that I was going down for all the wrong reasons. From there, I switched to liberal arts because I realized really what I want to study is everything. And in liberal arts, I thought I was going to be able to do that. And then I started looking at the curriculum when I transferred to a four-year school and realized, yeah, Classes there don't look terribly interesting to me, and I end up in econ, which has turned out pretty well for me, and has allowed me to actually indulge my curiosity very, very broadly, which I appreciate. So the why exercise is a really good piece of life advice, right? And one thing to, to pull out of this lesson is, I can't tell you, take an intermediate photography class because you're going to learn the most important lessons there. That was a lesson I got in an unpredictable fashion. And this is the beautiful thing about this broader liberal arts project, this thing that we have associated with college as a whole, which is you study a bunch of different things. Most of them turn out to be useless, but sometimes you get some little nugget of wisdom that provides an enormous amount of value in an unpredictable way. Right? So I can't say, take the photography class, you'll get a lot out of it, it just so happened that I was in the right class at the right time to get that right little nugget of wisdom that really, really helped me. That's the why exercise as life advice. It's also really valuable as study advice. So after I became an econ major, uh, I became an econ tutor. And as an econ tutor, basically my job was I'd ask a student a question, they'd give me an answer, then I'd give them a confused look and say, are you sure? Why do you think that's the answer? And this is the best thing you can do. Let's say you're looking at MindTap uh, as a 157 student and you do the adaptive test prep. And you say, I think the answer is C. Why do I think the answer is C? Well, because such and such and such. Well, why this stuff? Well, because this other stuff over there. There are essentially infinite questions you can ask, infinite why questions, why this, why that, why anything. So there is some art to it, right? And you just have to practice. But you ask the right why questions, you're going to find one of two things happens. Either you find intellectual bedrock. It has to be C, because otherwise up is down and inside is outside and nothing makes any sense, right? And by going through that exercise, what you've done is verified your suspicion that the answer is C, and you've really reinforced the thinking behind it. Right? You've, turned an, you've turned an easy question into a useful learning opportunity. The other thing that could happen is you find some contradiction. Well, why this? Well, because this other thing, but actually that would imply that something else is wrong. And if you do that, you've done a much better job than flipping to the answer key and finding out, oh, actually, the answer was B. You find out, okay, actually, I don't think the answer is C. Well, what do I do now? You keep thinking it through. And when you get that answer out of your own head, it's a lot more valuable than if you just flip to the back of the book and look at the answer key. Now, that's not always going to work, right? Sometimes you just have to say, hey, I've been sitting, staring at this question for 20 minutes. It might be time to just look at the answer key and move on to another one. But once you get to that other one, 
run through the why exercise again. And this is a really good thing to do when you're working in a study group. So if you go meet your friend on Google Meet, your study partner, ask them why questions, quiz each other. Say, what's the answer to this question? What's the equilibrium price and quantity? And they say, well, it's this and that. Why is it this and that? And make them justify their answer. Explaining your answer forces you to demonstrate your understanding, and it forces you to reveal to yourself the weak points in your understanding. So this is a really good study tool as a learning exercise, also as a piece of, uh, as a piece of life advice, right, to help you avoid making bad decisions. Now, as long as I'm here, let me also just make one more point on this. Why are you taking this class? Now, this is a question only you can answer for yourself. Uh, so maybe you're taking this class because it's required for your major. Well, then you have to ask the follow-up question. Why are you taking that major? Uh, and you keep going through that, and that'll help you figure out, what am I doing here? What should I do as a result of that? And so again, the life advice point, but the version of the question I can answer is, from my perspective, why the stuff in these classes, right? So principles of microeconomics, math for econ, and R for econ, in all three cases, I'm going to have two very similar answers. At the very least, these classes, any econ class really, sends a strong signal. This is a big reason most people go to college, is because they want to prove to employers that they can do hard work. And these classes are going to be hard work. For the principal students, this is going to involve a change in the way you think. That's a difficult thing to do. Uh, for the math students, math is hard, right? We all know that. For the R students, learning to program a computer, also a difficult thing. So whether or not these skills are valuable, and I think that they are valuable in and of themselves. At the very least, they prove something about you. They prove that you can hack it. Now, that said, if you have a difficult time, it's not the end of the world if you don't get it the first time through. Right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with, say, me finding out that actually I can't play the ukulele. I could learn to play the ukulele, but I just don't care enough. My opportunity cost is too high. I like this beautiful object in my office, but for me, you know, if I was taking a class in ukulele, it would be purely recreational. Um, sorry, I'm going off on a, on a tangent again. So the other side of this, besides sending a signal, what is really valuable from these classes is that they are providing you with additional mental models. They're giving you new ways to look at the world. So math is giving you sort of a way to attach some logical structure to your thinking. For the R students, being able to program a computer gives you a way to pull insights out of data that you just can't get by looking at a table of values. And for the principal students, having a little bit of economic theory really allows you to think about what matters in a situation, think about what sort of interactions there are, and think about how you can go beyond your gut instinct and ask, is that really a plausible thing? More mental models is more better. It's not a case of having the right answer or the right tool. Um, Russ Roberts, the host of Econ Talk, uh, tells this story a lot. He talks about uh, talking to someone who was an MBA student who went off into the real world and had some sort of a failure. And their reaction to their failure is, oh, I was using the wrong case study. They think back to when they were in school, they saw some study about such and such uh, episode at some company implementing some new change. And they think, oh, I just, I shouldn't have looked at that one, I should have looked at this one. And maybe looking at that other case study would have helped, but the point is not to try and find the right answer, because we're always dealing with a complex world of uncertainty. We don't know what the future holds. What we need is many ways of looking at the same thing. Another metaphor Russ Roberts likes is the blind man and the elephant. You got a bunch of blind guys come across an elephant. One of them is touching the tusk. He says, this thing is hard and bony. One of them's touching the ear. He says, it's this big floppy thing. One of them's touching the leg. He says, whatever this thing is, it's like a tree. Each one has a different insight into the nature of this elephant they're touching. 
since they're all blind, none of them can see that it's an elephant. So how do you try and figure out what it is if you can't step back and see the whole thing? Well, you have to put together these different perspectives. For us, we're looking at this big, complex world, and we can't just go to the moon and look down and see the entire American economy all at once and figure it out. We're only ever going to be able to see parts of it. So having extra mental models to see this is really valuable. Economics gives us a whole set of mental models to look at things. Uh, so that said, this semester, my three pieces of uh, my three pieces of advice. One is bear this in mind. Right? Think about trying to flesh out your to your mental toolkit. Think about adding extra tools that allow you to see the world better. Use the why exercise when you're studying. Look at a question, come up with an answer, and then ask why that answer is correct. Ask why the other answers are incorrect. And keep iteratively going through that, justifying your answer to yourself. That's going to be your best way to build your understanding so you can succeed in these classes. And finally, use the why exercise as life advice. Ask yourself why you're doing any particular thing, and then go deeper and ask why that motivation is important to you. Why you think it's important, right? Keep going deeper and deeper and deeper, and what you'll find very often is you're doing something that you don't need to do, right? And maybe you'd be better served doing something else. So just being critical of your own decisions. All right, that's the why exercise. I hope that that'll be useful to you.